So recently I've been working on an NFT marketplace. I am new to Web3 and have been exploring this for a while now and I just finished coding this that out and deploying it on Verizon and I thought I should make a video on it to showcase the site and talk about how I went about creating it. So I'm going to divide this video into two parts for those who just want to see how the entire app works. Just go through the first part of the video where I show you the functionality of the site. You can um, create new collections, you can add NFTs or so-called mint NFTs, uh, you can buy, sell them and the marketplace takes certain commission from every sale that happens on the platform and it also offers some discounts and we're going to see all through that and in the second part of the video i'm going to go briefly over how i created the whole thing how i coded them out so well let's get started i am sohan and well let's start so like i said i i am hosting this site or web app uh, on Vercel, and if you don't know what Vercel is, Vercel it's is uh, I mean if you don't know what Vercel is, maybe you're living under a rock. Vercel is one of the best deployment platforms, and since I'm using Next.js, um, well, it's awesome. I mean, it's so simple to use. Okay, that's in plane landing. I'm sorry if the noise comes. <laughs> uh, so Versa is awesome for deploying anything with Next.js, and not just Next.js. Versa has deployment templates for many frameworks like VJS or maybe simple create React app or in this case for Next.js. So I'm going to talk about all the technologies I used or, or all the stuff I used in the second part of the video but in the first part let me show you how the app works. So this is the URL of the app. You can follow along if you wish to. app. It is currently hosted on the Mumbai test network of Polygon. It says here in the footer. So make sure that you are not on the actual Ethereum chain or the Polygon's uh, actual uh, blockchain. You should be on the Mumbai test network for it to work. And uh, the source code, if you want to visit, well, it's on my GitHub. I'll show you that in the uh, second part of the video, but let's uh, focus on the functionality first. So I'll uh, connect my MetaMask. Just a moment. Okay, I did a mistake. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. As I write my long password. And I'm connected to Mary Mumbai. And which account should I create? Yeah, I think I should just connect this spare market. Current account is not connected. Well, that's fine. I'm just going to go for the spare one. I'm on the polygon and it looks proper. Yeah. So I am on the uh, chain and my wallet is connected. So the site works in such a way. When you arrive on the home page you get to see three of the all, uh, all of the total collections that you have and it's just for demo all of these pictures are, by the way are not owned by me i found them on the internet and uh, they're not owned by me they're not licensed by me and i'm not using any of these pictures for any commercial purposes only for testing and there's no real transactions happening on the platform i mean no real transactions of real money value everything's for tests so i thought i should make that clear but i'm using these pictures as nfts and you get three nft collections shown on the home page here to attract people and um, so uh let me show you what woofy is if you look at the top uh, app bar you you see that here's something called the woofy now what a woofy is it's a native token that is i mean i call that a native token of the platform because the name well i kept it the same as the name of the platform uh, what Woofy tokens allow you to do is that for every single Woofy token that you own, you get a certain discount when any NFT that you sell on the platform, you get a certain discount on that because uh, the marketplace commission rate is 3%, which means that for, say, for example, if you sell something for one Matic, a uh, Matic is the unit of uh, token on uh, the Polygon. So if you sell something for one Matic, the platform will take 3% for every sale. So 3% of one Matic. So the platform will take 0.03 Matic if you sold an NFT for one Matic. But you can decrease this percentage for every single Woofy token you own. And every single Woofy you own will give you an additional 0.05% off from the 3%. So for example, if you own one Woofy token, let's say if you own two Woofy token, in that case, your commission rate will decrease from 3% to 2.9%. 
So I think that's something cool. I mean, it gives people an, uh, an incentive to trade my tokens. And the best part is that there's only uh, an upper limit of the maximum number of woofies that you can mint. So the first 50 people can buy this for a very minimal cost of 0.1 Matic. But when they run out, you cannot buy any more and you have to well, trade with someone. You can uh, buy woofies if they are sell. If they're on sale by someone else, like it shows here that I can buy this, which means that I don't own Woofy 1 and 3, someone else owns that. And I can, if I buy that, then the Woofy gets transferred to me for 0.5 Matic as is listed. And this 0.5 Matic goes to the previous owner of the Woofy. And we don't have marketplace commission on this. So the entire price goes to the Woofy. So the incentive for buying Woofies is that you get discounts, right? Like I talked about. So you can either buy Woofies that are on sale by others, or you can sell your own. So I own currently four of these. Uh, six and eight are unlisted. They're not on sale, but two and four are on sale. And they're each I kept on sale for 0 0.5 Matic. Uh, whenever you want to sell something, you have the option of specifying the price of uh, the Woofy before listing it for sale and someone else can buy that. So once uh, people run out of minting new uh, Woofies for 0 0.1 Matic each, the only way for you to get new Woofies is to buy Woofies that are listed on sale by others. So I think that makes things interesting. But now let's jump to the actual, I mean the core part of the app, which is the collections so if you go to the home page you can either click on these or if you want to see all the collections here just click on collections and then you can filter the collections based on all or all the collections that you authored i see that uh the spare account only authored one of them just the cnv collection we see here owned for uh all of the collections for at least where you own at least one token and sale is all of those collections where at least one token is on sale so you can filter them out let me show you um let me show you uh, this city. So as it says here that I'm not the author of this collection. You see that this address is different. And uh, you have the contract address here, this entire collection. Each collection on my site has uh, a different smart contract deployed for it. But uh, the deployment cost is very minimal, not only because we're using Polygon, but also because we're using something called a minimal proxy contract. We'll talk about this in the second part of the video, but that decreases the cost for deploying new contracts because every time you create a collection you essentially deploy a new ERC721 contract so that's something you should know um, so I have three NFTs in this collection currently and well all three are here you'll see that it says here owned which means I am the owner here you see the address and this this one says on sale so I'm not the owner but whoever he, this owner is well that's also me from another account but uh yes this owner has placed it on sale for three matic and same owner also has placed this one for five matic so you can go ahead and buy them if you wish to and your metamask would fire you um agree the transaction and you pay three matic and you become the new owner so let's uh let's test the functionality for uh, or you can uh sell yours whatever if you wish and whenever you make a sale buy whatever your ui changes accordingly to reflect the changes so let's uh let's buy the roadside token for three matic it says okay it's and the previous owner is c3 okay fine whoever that is and it says three matic well obviously yeah and remember uh, uh well certain commission rates have to be paid but you don't have to pay that out of the three matic the platform cuts uh takes its cut on its own by calculating the percentage from the number of woofies if any owned by the uh, owner of the nft which is c3 this address right here so if i go ahead with the transaction uh the nonce i think it's incorrect maybe let's just try let's confirm and the purchase is successful it's pending currently. It says so. Would you see that I am the new owner of this? So it says owned, but not for sale. So uh, I own that, but it is currently not listed for sale because I just purchased it. But if I want to put it for sale right now, then I can click on sale and it would be on sale. 
So let's put this on sale. Let's put this on sale. So I purchased this for three and my current marketplace commission, it says 2.8. Now, why does it say 2.8? Remember that this account had four rupees. So you get uh, 0.2% off from the actual commission rate. So you get 2.8%. I want to place this for maybe 10 Matic. <laughs> and yeah, I put this on sale. And I'm taking it sweet time. Come on. And now this is owned and listed for sale. So you have different color codings for the status of the river. And uh, it stays if you refresh the page. I mean, obviously it should stay if you refresh the page on this. And I, I think transaction 40. Hmm. Polygon takes some time to confirm the transactions, but ethers can't detect that. Hmm. Weird. Oh, it's not weird. No, 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 no. This page is dynamically generated by Next.js and we are using something called incremental static generation, which uh, generates new page, the new versions of the page every 30 seconds. So if you see the page before 30 seconds, it uh, shows you the old version of the page that was rendered by the server and saved. I should decrease the ISR from 30 seconds to 10 seconds. Maybe people might get confused if they reload. <laughs> That would be disastrous. But it's just a proof of concept app, just to show you that things work. Okay, so we have a city. And now let me show you a collection that I own, which means I am the author, the current account is the author. So this is something, uh, someone else is the author, right? So let's see a collection where I am the author. This uh, collection is the only one. And you see that the layout is pretty much the same, except for this, button right here that you didn't have the previous collection because I was not the author of that collection but in this collection I am the author so if you click on mint you have the uh, option to mint a new NFT that would be directly added here to this collection and then you can buy and sell that as usual you have the option of specifying the name of the NFT description images as well as any of the other properties that may, uh, platforms like OpenSea supports readable supports whatever I kept it simple by uh, just choosing three in pieces of inf information for the metadata. So you have the name, you have the image, you have the, de the description, all of them are strings. The image, I'm storing uh, all of the images on IPFS. And yeah, so uh, instead of just adding to this collection here, I'm going to create a new collection just to give you a demonstration of uh, how the entire flow works. So I go to create here and I have the option of creating a new NFT collection. Now, uh, this name, symbol and description refers to the uh, name, symbol and des description for the entire uh, contract. So we're not creating individual NFTs yet. We're first creating the collection. Once the collection is created, we can then mint NFTs inside of it. Uh, so let's call the collection. I have a picture, a stock image of um, a water bottle <laughs> and I'm going to create a collection called water bottle just as a proof of concept so I'm going to call it uh, maybe <laughs> maybe hydro bottles whatever symbol okay um, I don't know hydro HYB hydro bottles maybe <laughs> okay whatever and description okay uh this collection contains cool nfts with cool uh what do i call it cool pictures of water bottles and yep i have run out of ideas let's create them and it says here that you'll be able to mint new NFTs after you create the collection. So we're going to create the collection now. <sighs> and confirm. Hmm. Taking its time. Let's wait for a few seconds right there. And when uh, your collection is created, it takes you to that collection. It redirects you to that collection. So it's confirmed right now. Still waiting. 
and now you have your new collection here hydro bottles this page by the way is since we are using next.js every page is dynamically generated uh, at runtime and that's awesome i mean if you know next.js you will know what i'm talking about um, the technical term for it is called dynamic page generation is it i think that's the, the technical term so anyways whatever hydro bottles i have my own symbol here and notice that the contract I deployed for Hydro Bottles has this address, which you can actually go and verify. So we'll do the verification right now. We'll go on a Polygon Testnet, the Mumbai Net, and this one. I'll paste the contract for the NFT. Is it the correct one? Address. Yeah, this is the correct one. We'll do a search, and we see that it says contract so we know that this is a contract no transactions because we haven't created anything yet and the contract creator is it says d3 which is not you right because you didn't create the contract my marketplace contract did it for you we, we're going to talk about the technical stuff in the second part of the video i'm going to make the first part very uh small <laughs> I think I should make two videos instead of putting all of this inside one video. I mean, this is getting long anyways. Okay, so this is created. I just noticed my fab icon doesn't look like a dog. Although it's a dog, it looks like a goat. Whatever. <laughs> okay, read this. It says, only you, the collection author, can do this. Right? So if you click on Mint, you have the ability to uh, Mint new. So let's do this one. Uh, what do I call it? Steel, uh, metal, metal bottle, image. I stored it here. Okay. Let's crop it so it looks cool. Uh, maybe a bit more. Okay. Uh, this is just me playing around. Simple. Done. Okay decent <laughs> okay this picture shows a lonely <laughs> metallic water bottle <laughs> against a forest backdrop standing on a wooden platform just me being overly expressive i click on mint i met a mask would pop up once again asking me to confirm the transaction since i do need to pay some gas fees come on meta mask don't embarrass me okay confirm and let's wait for a few seconds here Come on, and we have it here. Now the image is getting pinned on IPFS, so for the duration that it doesn't get pinned, you're gonna see this flashing thing here, but once it gets pinned, the image would come here. There you go. So we have the metal bottle here. You are the owner, so you have the option to sell it. Currently not for sale, but you can sell it, and you own it. The description, the owner, whatever comes here. If we refresh the page, Next.js, should not build the page like i said because 30 seconds is way too less but if you refresh the page again it's gonna come here okay i need to decrease the duration seriously 30 seconds is way too long maybe five seconds or something maybe maybe okay whatever so that was it for the entire uh workflow of the app in the second part of the video i'm gonna uh, do a run over of the source code so well if you want to go see the second part go see the second part i'm going to release both of these at the same time so okay i hope i see you in the next video bye